Morgan meine Freunde and willkommen to the 50th edition of the Righteous Bow Jambo. This is not the presentation I intended to make. Originally I was going to present either live from or at the East Coast Blues and Roots Festival at Byron Bay, which is ordinarily held over Easter, but our pusillanimous government decided to call a snap COVID lockdown for the Easter long weekend and that put the kibosh on that. So I thought to myself, how else should one celebrate such an august and auspicious milestone? And it occurred to me that the central tenet of the video that I planned to make, my love for small to medium venue live music, uh, my disdain for corporately curated arena experiences, and the fact that I may have to increasingly choose the former over the latter because... Wait, stop. No. Latter over the former, not former over the latter. I thought putting together a video based on some of the photos that I've taken and some of the film that I've taken over the last 10 years or so, at, and in the end looking at the place of the audience member being a participant in live music, as in small to medium venues, rather than a consumer of it in the corporately curated event. It's all rather long-winded, so if you uh, don't want to hear that, just uh, turn off after you see Elvis Costello. I hope that it either inspires or reignites your passion for the kind of live music that I'm passionate about and that it reinforces your determination to help the industry recover once the slight semblances normalcy resume. magic at a gig. The feeling of the sound pressing against your chest and as you roar your mighty wail being forced back by that wall of sound, that determination and then having it uplifted by thousands of other wails to transcend it. That's a magic rare to be touched by. About nine o'clock on the day before the night I last saw Tom Jones, the festival campsite was starting to come to life. Hungover patrons, rough beasts slouching towards rough breakfasts or showers, cars and carts whizzing about resupplying the site, all of a sudden, ba 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 It's not unusual world to be loved by anyone. Tom Jones and his band were sound checking. Everybody stopped what they were doing and just started dancing, kicking up the yellow dust, abandoned in joy. God, it was wonderful. That night I saw Rhiannon Giddens. She did Harlan Howard's She's Got You. It was one of the most madly ecstatic moments I've ever seen on a stage. I could very imagine Patsy Cline gazing down from the unclouded skies thinking, good job, Hoss, good job. Rain is an occupational hazard at festivals and within a couple of hours tent entrances become like Passchendaele in miniature. There are few as smug and self-satisfying feelings as watching Instagram ready 18 year olds lose $200 sneakers in the morass while you sit safe in your dowdy gumboots.
When sapless age and weak, unable limbs should bring thy father to his drooping chair. My oldest boy Isaac carries on the torch for me as a devoted and heedless mosh pit maniac. Henry the Sixth, Part One, unless I'm much mistaken. At the Mountain Goats, a gaggle of foolish girls rushed the stage and started taking selfies against it, gibbering and cackling through There Will Be No Divorce, one of the Goats' greatest songs. I turned around to them and gave them a very sharp, shut the f up, and they just stared at me, obmutescent with stupefaction, like no one had ever told them they weren't the most important thing in the world. What a patient and kindly gent is Booker T. I complimented him on his latest album, Potato Hole, telling him that, as James Brown did, he taught us all we know, but he didn't teach us all he knew. He thanked me with the weary warmth of a gentleman who'd long earned his rest from the likes of me. We're on the, we're on the Jesus track. Let's talk more about Jesus. That's the real reason that we brought him here tonight, guys. He said someone I just, was uh, someone just yelled out, fuck right off, mate. I heard someone say that. Was it you? No, it wasn't me, it was someone over there. Yeah, no, no you're, you're correct. As usual, Sydney, you're very good student. It's beards tonight. Beards are the reason that we're here. And, uh, guys, my friends, this is fucking amazing. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. You guys are sensational. How many of you guys have seen the beers before? Are you familiar? The first live shows I ever went to were local punk gigs. Bands like Razor, The Survivors, at places like various nondescript halls in West End, one out of Tawong and one a 
half-day train ride out to Sandgate to find a gig that was 20 people in someone's front yard. My first legitimate gig was Graham Parker and the Rumour, where me and my mates blagged our way in despite being 14 at the time. Whatever you are beyond, hooked. That's what I was at that point by that band. This man once declared, I'm going to rock and roll all night, party every day. The ill-fated Big Spiderbeck, Louis Armstrong's only rival as the king of the cornet in the 1920s, said I'd walk into hell to see a good band. And in our dancing days, perhaps this is the way it is. But 40 years or more on, as the dark birds of time begin to swirl and dim our dancing days, perhaps it's Dylan Thomas who best described those crepuscular days with wild men who caught and sang the sun in flight and learned too late they grieved it on their way do not go gentle into that good night grave men near death who see with blinding sight blind eyes could blaze like meteors and be gay rage rage against the dying of the light 
I don't plan to go gentle into anywhere ever. I'll walk like Bix into hell. I'll sweat and strain sinew and soul, rave and burn and rock and roll all night until night is all that's left. There'll be no polite retreat to pre-approved seating and curated big brand arena experience. Let there be riot and wonder and the raising of hell and hue and cry until the dancing days dim and that light finally inexorably 